All right, so here I have a brand new scene. I'm just going to keep adding on to this one for right now because it's all about showing you how to initialize uh, animations and rotations and all that good stuff. So it, it's not about the scene itself. It's about the actual physical item that you're dragging in here, I, I believe. So under objects, I have a new directory called widget2. And here's that widget FBX. Now, look at the scale factor. This is what's important. When you export as FBX, uh, something happens to the scale factor that is unknown here. Uh, so what you have to do is play around with the scale factor to find out what, something close. So something I put in there is a 1. And I also want to generate some colliders for it. Okay, let's see if that's big enough. And if you F, there's your device. So you can see that is so, oh, so small. So how do we get this within the, the actual physical world and how does it show up? Now we could mess around with the scale factor for so long and try to get it lined up, but don't forget all these are at zero, 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 and there we go. Now you can see that, you know, it's not really about the scale factor, it's about the field of vision too. There we go. Okay, now let's adjust the field of vision just slightly for this. Remember that this has a very big um, swing on it. So I want a field of vision that would represent that. And you can hit play and you can see what I mean. So that wasn't so bad, was it? Now, do you see this, this white patch on the back of it when it starts rotating around? That is probably the best example of back face culling I've ever seen. Okay, so back face culling, what's that? Well, let's go back to Maya for a second to show you what back face culling is because it's a, it's an opportunity, a teachable moment, I would say. Uh, if you hit four, here's what I have. I have this polygon and it's a primitive made of just chunky primitives. And the fact is it's right on top of this face. So what happens when light hits it, it doesn't know what to do. Does it render the triangles or does it render the actual square? And that is a back face culling incident. So export all again, and I can export this right back into widget FBX and export it. Again, I want to choose millimeters. And back in Unity, nothing really happens. If you hit play, you're still going to have probably the back face calling incident show up. Nope. Wow. That's the first time I've actually seen that work. Huh. All right. Usually what you have to do is, is redrag out the actual model. So the field of vision is still very limited. So I'm going to have to adjust this. And by adjusting the field of vision, now what I have to do is take my main camera and adjust it. So I'm going to pull it back. Well, that's kind of a cool perspective on it. Let's uh... And you can see the warping that occurs because if you get it too close to the camera, see how it warps it, the base to an egg? So that's something you got to play around with until you get a good field of vision on it so it doesn't warp. See, I like that right there. Nice. Now what I'm getting is the animation automatically triggers. And if you go in here, you'll see that it says play automatically. Well, I can uncheck this, and then now if I play it, it will not automatically play that. Since there's only one animation on it, I'm not really too concerned about um, animation blending. 
And I think that would be a later on lesson anyway about animation blending and how that occurs. Because in here, I also have this. Animations. And right now, there is no animations except for one, which is very coincidental because it makes it a little easier to teach on how to actually do animation. Now, if I had a lot of animations in here, it would be a little harder. And the only reason I would put more animations out there to begin with is probably for the fact that, you know, it might be an AI character. In this case, I really want this character to be something that I can control and shoot myself using the keyboard and mouse. All right, so now in the next video, now that we got it all in here and it plays and everything else, we have to now write some scripts to actually handle the uh, the initialization process, that, that whole setup thing, and then the keyboard and mouse setup. So that's in the next video.